Hello, I'm Jen Wilson, Senior Programmer at Film Independent. Welcome to this Film Independent Presents Q&A for the Neon Film Pleasure, which premiered at Sundance Film Festival in 2021 and was nominated for two Spirit Awards this past year, Best Director and Best Supporting Female. Special thanks to lead sponsor, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and Vision Media, who hosts all our virtual screenings and Q&As. If you're joining us live today, please feel free to submit a question for us to ask our guests using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Now, please welcome today's guest, director and co-writer of Pleasure, Ninja Thyberg, and lead actor, Sophia Kappel. Hi there. Hi. What is your date of birth? 27th of April, 1999. Do you know what you're here for? Yes. Are you ready to make a banana happy? Oh my God. He's the natural. Just give me a little tap and that means like, chill out. Yeah. She definitely can't have you. I found my niece, like I'm very submissive. Oh, then why do you act like such a bitch all the time? Yeah. Look at me. I'm here to be the next big porn star. Welcome. I uh, am so excited to talk to you. I saw this film probably about six months ago and thought, oh, I'll, I'll never get to do a Q&A and talk to those two for this. But um, I'm, the reason that I'm very excited is I actually almost wrote my master's thesis on lesbian porn. So mm -hmm. I know who Dana Armand is when... <laughs> I was like, I was when I was um, watching your film and Dana D. Armand's na names came up in the credit. I was like, this is going to be legit because she's, you know, an absolute LA legend um, in the porn, in porn industry. Um, do, do you want to just start, uh, Ninja, by, by talking about how you came to make a film? You're Swedish, both of you are Swedish, right? How you came yeah. to make a film about the US porn industry? Yeah, I mean, I've been interested in, in porn as a subject uh, my whole adult life. Um, uh, I, I started as an, uh, a very uh, <laughs> a black and white like anti-porn activist when I was 16 after seeing my first, the first porn film for the first time. And I was already a, a very engaged feminist and I thought it was uh, very, you know, degrading and objectifying to the women. And um, at that time in Sweden where the feminist debate were like, porn was seen as something, you know, like, uh, yeah, a representation of uh, men, you know, uh, yeah, oppression, basically. Um, and um, so, yeah, but I, I got really engaged and, and uh, felt like, uh, since it was, uh, was so taboo, I, I wanted to, um, I felt this need of talking about it and dealing with it. And then it became like a long journey where, you know, I, I kept studying and I also started to like add new perspective and change my view on things. And I became after a while very interested in feminist pornography because like I, it wasn't the, you know, part of the, like the sex part that was the problem to me, but the representation and the lack of, you know, yeah, female representation and female perspective. So um, yeah, and uh, so then I was in the feminist porn movement and uh, after a while, I also started to challenge that, like question that a little bit, like who are like, we, we call this feminists and we say that this is like oppressive porn, the mainstream, but the women doing that say that it's liberating or, you know, who, who got the right to, yeah. So I, I've just been very engaged in, in the debate for such a long time. Uh, and uh, I wrote an essay about porn when studying gender studies and there I became so curious about like I felt like I really because I studied uh, so much porn like uh, and I, I, I became so interested in, in getting to know these people and the world from the inside so I made a short film that later turned into the feature length film um, but uh, yeah I think it's also that I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in media images and how they affect us, uh, like the contrast between the stereotype and then the human being. And uh, so that also fascinates me of like the people that go in, get, go in and out of playing something very stereotypical and playing along with, you know, very, like sometimes very problematic, uh, you know, stereotypes and fantasies, but uh, that's not who they are and how, how are they off camera and on camera like uh yeah so um so many things and and it felt you know like really an opportunity also to 
make a point about uh, the male gaze in our culture uh, to, to go into the epicenter of the male gaze and reverse the camera and look it, at it from an, another perspective. For, for Sophia, I'm, I'm interested in um, what was your reaction when you first read this film and um, what was it that made you want to be the lead in it? Um, I mean, I ended up on an audition because I was in therapy and I was putting myself through situations that felt uh, or was uncomfortable. Um, but Ninja had such a clear vision about what she wanted this movie to be and the, the history and like the, the journey, Ninja's journey to the point of this movie being made. I mean, Ninja started writing this movie when I was like 13. Um, so there were like, I think I could name a thousand reasons as to what spoke to me about this film, but I think a few of them were that, um, I grew up with internet, um, porn is very accessible. Uh, it always has been my entire life, um, which makes porn kind of our sexual education. I didn't get a lot of sexual education in school. And I think that's very or can be very harmful because we're not taught how we're supposed to consume porn um and we there's a common understanding when we watch like an action film that we we don't go out on the street and shoot people just because we saw a movie of it but when we're watching porn we tend to re reproduce those um pictures and if you see someone getting choked that might happen in real life and i think that if pressure had been out when I was 15, 16, my, my intimate relationships and how I view sex and feminism and how I view people in the adult industry would have been very different, but also for the people in the adult industry, I think, me, myself, I had a lot of prejudice prior to making this film and prior to meeting Ninja and going to Los Angeles and meeting people from the industry. And I think it's very easy to have prejudice towards things you know very little about. Um, and I think that pleasure is a great opportunity to get an insight in, into this industry that very few people has an insight into. And the movie isn't necessarily there to push the audience toward, uh, towards an opinion. It's more open for the audience to make up their own mind and um, question yourself on how you view the people in the porn industry and how you consume porn. Um, so I'm hoping that the, or what intrigued me was also like the difference that the film could or hopefully can make for people who are actually in the industry and bridge that gap between normal um, society and the, the industry, because I think a lot of the problems that are still present in the industry could easier, if that's a word, more easy, uh, be easily be um, solved if we have the help from everyone and not uh, everyone who's not in the porn industry, like turning their back um, towards what happens there. Um, because there are great parts and there are parts that are not as great. But yeah, I can name a thousand reasons, but. Uh, Ninja, so did you talk to a lot of, of um, real actors uh, to do research for, for writing the movie? Uh, real porn actors, I know. Um, you used several real uh, porn actors in your film, and I'm, I'm just really fascinated by um, their take on their own industry and what they thought about your film. Yeah, I mean, the, the film is, is based on research that I've done, uh, like traveling back and forth between uh, Stockholm and LA during a period of five years. So I spent uh, like, yeah, uh, countless, um, I've been countless porn shoots and, and I've, I, I just like the first trip I, I, I had, uh, 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 how do you say, transcribed like interviews, like 400 pages in interviews. It's I just like, uh, it's there's so much uh, research <laughs> behind everything. And, and everyone actually, except Sofia in the film are played by actual people from, from the adult industry. Um, and um, the thing is like, I think it's so important, both when talking about porn as a subject, but also talking about the industry and, people in the industry that there is like so many different types of people and porn and uh, so many different sections of the industry. 
And uh, so there's everything from people like that really share my beliefs and that I feel like we're on the same team. And then there's people who are like definitely on the other, like not on my team, you know, it's and, and everything in between. So, um, um, but like, uh, yeah, in, in, in my film, um, uh, the the really bad guys in the film um, or the characters are played by really good guys in real life. Um, so and and we had uh, like also people from the adult industry like being part of the production um uh and uh yeah like the reactions i mean i think yeah everyone like uh, reading the script uh, they all said that it was very accurate and also like everyone said that it's very authentic in the sense that like everything that is happening feels very realistic uh, but it's um, this is really like this is my take on on the porn industry and uh, like you know it's it's one and a half or what one hour and forty five minutes uh, so there's a very limited amount of time and I've chosen what to put in the film based on things that I want to address and talk about that are somehow connected to to me also like it's also an allegory of being a woman in in a male dominated world and and. There's a lot like of, of uh, me in Bella. Um, uh, so yeah, like um, it's not like, it's not a film that is like a, the, the, like an objective, uh, ex this is exactly what the industry is, but it's, uh, this is the things that I've been focusing on based on my perspective and my research. Uh, what, one of the aspects of your film I really appreciated, uh, you know, I've been, watching mainstream U.S. porn for probably since the 1980s um, when I was a teenager um, up to now and definitely have noticed a lot of changes. Um, there are um, several scenes in this where there's like the um, gagging, gagging porn, which I find extremely unappealing. <laughs> and but but it it has become a main feature of any porn that you watch now is is the gagging yeah um and i guess my my question is do you think that i feel like sometimes porn has evolved to a more aggressive violent place like the baseline for it is more aggressive and violent than what it used to be did you feel that way about it um yes i mean i uh I'm not, I don't, um, this just like, this is just based on my own, uh, what I have seen. Uh, and I, I'm not sure if it's true, like I can't, uh, but uh, I, I felt that like there was a peak where porn was more violent than it is now. Like I felt that there was, at least, especially there was a peak where it was more, degrading and uh the the description uh and the content that like you really felt like you were watching like a real abusive scene like and uh the type of porn like what the, the abusive scene that she's doing like that there was a lot of porn like that also like the descriptions um and and, and shady companies um facial abuse for example is a fa like a, how do you say unfamous or what the uh, um site and i feel like that type of super explicit like misogynistic porn i i don't feel like it's as present uh it's still like there's been a lot of focus on, on bdsm and uh, choking and and that kind of stuff but an important shift is that like the performer are getting more and more control over the content because so much of the porn is now moving over to only fans where they own their like it's completely you know turning everything upside down because now the performer is setting the rules for everything hiring yeah. like the male talent sometimes even the, the women hire a director you know so shifting the roles um which like makes so much more sense you know like that uh I think it's it's crazy. Like it's been all these guys uh, making money out of women doing porn when they're not doing it themselves. Like if someone should make money out of it, like that, it should be the one doing it. Um, but um, 
Um, yeah, so I think also, and, and, and since it's moving over to social media, uh, the fans, the consumer have more of a personal relationship. Uh, the, the performer becomes more a human, a person that also show themselves on and off camera. Uh, and uh, if you like put your own material out, it's not going to be the same degrading description. Uh, and uh, so I, I feel like it's becoming a little, yeah, more respectful and less of that like brutal misogynistic, um, uh, yeah, content. So let's talk about there's two, there's two scenes in the movie that are uh, pretty disturbing and um, you know I'm pretty sure they're intentionally disturbing. Um, the first one is, uh, you know, our, our main character, Bella Cherry, played by Sophia, has the experience of uh, doing a, a BDSM scene with a woman director and has a great experience on that. So she thinks she's ready to sign up for more rough sex experiences through her agent, which she does. And then she gets on set with some people who, who don't get it, who are not um working in the same way as this female director did in in the in the bdsm can you sort of talk about the juxtaposition of those two scenes and what you what you wanted to um show what you wanted to show yes yeah i mean i i, I wanted to have a, an example of that type of shoot where boundaries are being crossed like that or uh, because I've, I've heard so many of those stories and I, I know they exist. I, I witnessed, uh, uh, you know, and I've seen that type of porn. And um, But it was also really important for me to show the, yeah, I mean, like uh, to show how you can still work with stereotypical gender roles of like a woman being tied up and being submissive and a man being dominant and violent as a role play, you can still do that and create that type of content in a way that when like that is very respectful and caring. And uh, uh, so um, like to to also show that contrast and it do, I think it does matter that we're well, like having a female, having more women on set, especially like if there's a young female performer who's new coming to a porn set where it's only men like tw twice her age uh, they all know each other. They've all been working for ten years, and she's completely new. She's the only one woman there. Like that's a, that's the most typical se setting. Like that's usually how it is. Like one woman, maybe one in makeup, but there's a lot of porn shoots where it's only like one, and and it doesn't have to be that type of you know bad guys or or degrading or like. But it's still the, this imbalance. Like uh, so, I it do matter to to have more women also behind the camera and uh, but especially to like to talk to show the contrast with like what you can do how important consent is and how you can do things in a good way and how you can do it in a bad way so it's like a very pedagog how do you say pedagog pedagogical yeah mm. uh so for sophia how did ninja make it it safe for you to um perform these scenes where you are being choked and spit on and attacked? I mean, in a lot of ways uh, for that scene in particular, particular um, we actually practiced it months prior to shooting it. Um, I also had a huge, say, a huge say in who got casted for the part because Ninja was very adamant that I was never put in a situation where I felt unsafe or uncomfortable to start off with. Um, but we practice it a lot. Uh, it's very technical and very choreographed. I mean, it's not one long take where I get slapped around. It's very short takes and um, a lot of movie magic. For example, when they're choking me, my head turns red, bluish, uh, but that's not because they're choking me. That's because I'm like tensing my entire body, which turns my head red slash blue. Um, so a lot of movie magic, but also a lot of discussion and dialogue around what was okay and what was not okay, what I felt safe and comfortable doing and what I didn't feel safe and comfortable doing. 
Um, my one of my closest friends from Sweden also flew in. Um, so she was actually with us during that set. Uh, and Ravika, who plays Joy, was also there during that scene. Um, and their only job was basically to watch me. And if I ever made eye contact with them, that meant cut. Um, everyone in the room was allowed to say cut. Um, if I felt it was too much, I mean, I could say cut or no. Uh, and I think for that scene in particular, the physical part wasn't the hardest. Um, that was also like one of the best days on set for me. I thoroughly enjoyed that day, even though you can't tell, obviously. Um, but the mental part was harder because I had to get in a headspace where I relate to Bella. And I think, I mean, one in three women get sexually abused sometime uh, during their lifetime. So I think it's something a lot of us can relate to. Um, and of course, that's not the nicest feeling to feel, but it's also not for real. And I was able to uh, feel all of those feelings in a setting where I was very safe and comfortable. Um, so a lot of consent and dialogue and, and practice and making sure that everyone felt safe. And for me personally, I wanted, um, I wanted to be reminded by the other members of the cast that they didn't uh, hate me during the very violent scene. So uh, during the, um, the breaks and when we set said cut um they would shower me with love and appreciation so everything around that scene except for when we actually shot it was very positive and very fun I mean I got a lot of candy and coca-cola which is like my favorite thing in the world <laughs> um so there were a lot of bits and pieces um I mean it was a collective um a collective thing but ninja played the biggest part in that and making sure that I felt safe and comfortable. And even after that scene, me and Ninja spoke about it and we talked through what um, maybe I needed to process after shooting that scene. So, I mean, there's a lot of trust. I trust Ninja with my life. And if I didn't, I don't think this movie would have been possible uh, to make. Um, so a lot of trust in Ninja very, very early on showed me that she was worth the trust. Uh, she's never crossed my boundaries or done anything to hurt me or like done anything at all to hurt my feelings in any way so I've always felt very safe with Ninja and I mean she would never do any any harm to me um so your your other scene which you might have been talking about this too is when Bella becomes the aggressor um against Ava and and does some of the things to Ava that were done to her prior in the uh in the rough scene um between you and the actress who who plays ava did you sort of do the same thing like ask her like what she consents to do can feel feels okay with and things like that yeah i was actually very very uncomfortable what when we were going to shoot that film um i think it had a uh, I got like a shock when I put the strap on on and immediately wanted to take it off. Um, I didn't enjoy having a dick. Um, but then me and Claire, who um, is the girl who, who plays Ava, we- Evelyn. Evelyn, oh yeah, Evelyn. I don't know why Evelyn I said Claire. that. Evelyn, Claire, yeah. Um, we, we had a conversation and talked about what her boundaries were and what she was okay with. And for example, with like slapping and spitting, um, I think it's like one uh, one second where I'm actually like giving her a little slap. Other than that, I was actually high-fiving Ninja in the bed because I felt too uncomfortable doing it um, and felt too uncomfortable being aggressive towards another woman, uh, to be honest. So yeah, we, we had a dialogue about it and spoke a lot about it, um, mostly because I was the one who was most, unco most uncomfortable in that scene. Um, but I'm really, really happy and thankful for, for Evelyn in that scene. She really, really helped me um, to be able to do that scene um, because it was really difficult, really difficult. Do you know what was crazy is when you were, uh, when that scene came on, I, I guess because I'm gay, I had this desire for the two of them to have this like, 
really fantastic love scene together, of course. But it also felt like that was being set up a little bit, and then it's it's, it's and then it's a total shock when when Ava is you know complaining about um, Bella's body and like the condition of her vagina, and um, I was just like, oh, this is not gonna. <laughs> it just like suddenly hit me like this is not going to be that kind of scene because it's not that kind of movie, Jen. Like it's not. We're not suddenly going to go into a romance. <laughs> These two are getting together, but it was interesting that I felt led there, and then extremely not that I really, I actually really liked that. Um, for uh, um, Sophia, did you talk to the people who were career porn stars a lot? And I'm wondering if you got any advice from them um that affected your performance at all um yeah i got a i i talked to a lot of them and i think that was really important for me and for me to be able to portray bella as um the opposite of a stereotypical uh person who uh or what we uh see as the stereotypical persons who go to this uh or work in the adult industry um, I mean, I got a lot of advice, um, some advice I might keep for myself, um, but um, I mean, I asked so many questions that were really uncomfortable to ask, but that they were really open to answer. Like, what do you do if you're on set with someone that you don't find attractive? Um, and no harm towards John Strong, but he's obviously a, a much older man than I am. Um, and you still have to find um, something to, or I asked it like when I was Bella, I had to find something that made the character kind of turn into this like sexy. Is he the guy from Bella's first scene who's holding yeah, the camera? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, so I spoke to a lot of different uh, performers on how they deal with that if they're on set with someone they don't find particularly attractive, like maybe focus on one thing that you find attractive, um, nice eyes or nice teeth or nice hands or whatever, uh, but also how to find confidence when you maybe don't really have it and how it really is a performance. And I think when I understand that porn isn't real um, and the porn we consume is it's fictional uh, most of it I mean there are people who put out their intimate um, uh, time uh, on, on internet uh, but uh, for the most it's very fictional and I had to see it as a performance and I had to think about who Bella was as a character and what drove her in this um, this like really wanting to become a star she's not there just to do porn she's there to become a porn star uh, she's not there to be just anyone and like switching in to the performer and being like oh now the camera is here and I'm looking into the camera's eyes and I'm thinking about the guys that are at home getting turned on by me and all of those small details that mattered quite a lot to the performance but that someone or at least I wouldn't think about in my regular day-to-day -day life um so a lot of those things but also I think for me it was more important to challenge my prejudice that I had and to realize that I was wrong about most of what I thought I knew about the porn industry um and using that uh, so what what do you think would happen um, you know, in, in the instance where, where Bella was ab abused by the guys in that scene, what do you think would have happened if, if uh, a real porn actress were to, you know, say to the director, I'll, I'll do anything you want in this rough scene, but it needs to be choreographed out. Like, I need to know who's going to be spitting on me from what direction, what part of my face. Like all these things need to, I need to agree to all of that. Do you think she, that 
directors just don't want to agree to that and are basically like, no, I'm the director. I'm calling the shots. If you want your money, you have to do it the way we want to shoot it. Yeah, I would say, yeah, okay. I would say that it's a lot more complex than that. Um, I don't think it is as easy as just requesting. I would like this to be choreographed. I think you have to remind yourself of the power dynamics that are when you're a young female alone with men that are twice your age uh, in a room, because even though there is this illusion that you're allowed to say no, they're bringing up all the consequences. I'm gonna call your agent, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. You're, um, and I mean, even in, in the movie, Speaker tells her like, do not be a problem, do not cause drama. Right. So you have that in the back of your head I can cause trouble, I can cause trauma uh, or drama, I can do all of these things. And I think that's not only for the adult industry, I think that's the way it is when yes. you're part of a minority or if you're a female, because you're gonna have to use strategies and adapt. And I think most people can relate to some time where you've been in a situation where you actually wanted to say, no, I don't wanna do this, this is crossing my boundary, I don't feel safe. And then you do it anyways. Yeah, and I think that's probably true of the mainstream film industry as well, being asked to do nudity or something that you don't necessarily want to do, but then feeling like you don't have any leverage because you're just starting out in your career. Uh, Ninja, did you want to say something about that? Um, no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I was just, I was wondering who you, who you were asking, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, with a lot of, I mean, it, it's, it's, really really depends on you know if what type of shoot it is and uh if it like because usually the um, uh like performers like it's very very different from you know nowadays when when we we have intimacy coordinators and we talk about you know how like everything should be choreographed and you don't like want the actors to improvise because then it becomes improvising sex because then it becomes personal and like you're much more vulnerable but in porn uh, like usually the performers, like they, they want, like they don't want the director. Like they, I, I've heard so many times, like saying, you know, that a, a good director is a director <clears throat> that trusts us and let us do our thing. <clears throat> and and uh, everyone, like what they talk, what they're talking about, and directors as well, is like when they want to sort like capture some like a authentic uh, uh, connection and authentic. Uh, chemistry and just like go along and see what happens between these two performers and and if it's in an, in an environment where where they are safe and they trust each other and also like the director and, and the performer they worked before and they know each other and they know a little bit how they work and maybe the director put them together because like knowing like oh I think we can create this kind of chemistry then it's then it would really uh, be much like um, a problem or like uh, if, if the director comes in and gives too much much instruction like that would like a total opposite feel like a, like integrity uh you know uh problematic because the, yeah so it, it all these things like they're so connected to this like situation you can't apply the, like any rules to just to general Alrighty, I'm going to ask some audience questions. Um, the end of this film is bittersweet as the lead actress gets what she thinks she wants, but in reality, she's lost friends and compromised her morals to gain a place in the elite group. In your words, can you say what you're hoping the audience would take away from that ending? Uh, you, Ninja. Uh, sorry, can you, can you repeat? Uh, I think I, I, can you repeat it again? Sorry, or uh, yeah. Sure. The, the end of the film is bittersweet as the lead actress gets what she thinks she wants, but in reality, she's lost friends and compromised her morals to gain a place in the elite group. In your words, can you say what you're hoping the audience would take away from the ending? Mm, I hope that, I mean, um, I, I love the ending because to me, I'm like, yeah, she made a lot of mistakes, but like when the film ends, she's like, she's owning up to that. And I think she has become an, like, I feel like I've taken care of her and I re I've like, 
she's been mine or like I, I've taken care of her up until now but I'm releasing her out in the world and I feel confident that she's going to go on a great path like I I think she has come to a lot of really important conclusions and she has matured and uh, um so I think um, she's going to do well. So I don't see it as a sad end. I mean, there's a lot of bad things happening up until the, uh, 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 but like in the end, I think she's in a good place. Um, and I, um, 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 what they should bring up with the end, um, I don't know, like uh, that, uh, I want the, I want, I hope that the audience, uh, think that she's going to go to see Joy because that's what I want her to do uh, because that's that is to me the heart of the film and also for me the heart of like this film is about like um, in a way it's an allegory of being a woman and uh, like you know you can you can you can quit porn but you can't quit patriarchy so uh, like you have to deal with it so like it was would have been too much of an easy way out to just like oh she's gonna just quit porn. I think that she should um, uh, like uh, you know deal with things, but but the 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 only way to move forward is with like female camaraderie and solidarity with other women and to build a female network. That's like the number one solution. Uh, so I hope she's gonna do that. I think she's going to get a part on uh, Steven Soderbergh's The Girlfriend Experience. That's what I predict for Bella. <laughs> All good things. Um, what's next for you both? Uh, Sophia, do you want to start? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm continuing to act. I've already done two more projects and I'm doing two more this year. Um, I don't know what will happen in a couple months, but I'm starting to shoot my next feature in 11 days um so i'm i'm c continuing with what i'm doing now and hopefully i'll be able to do this for a really long time will will your next project be english language or swedish language it'll be swedish um hopefully there will be some english too uh soon but we'll see what the future has in hold for me that's good. I'd, I'd love to see a feature with you speaking all in Swedish. That would be really interesting after you see <laughs> after seeing you do a one in English. Um, for Ninja, what, what's your next project? Um, I uh, I can't uh, talk uh, about it uh, really, but uh, like uh, yeah, I'm I'm working on something, and it's gonna be uh, a little bit more fam family friendly, but still. Uh, uh, also like similar in the way that it's it's about uh, the female gaze and it's about gender roles. Um. Uh, let's see, is it true that you auditioned over 100 possible actors for the main role? 100? Uh, oh, yeah, like probably more like a thousand. Um, yeah, it, it took me one and a half year. Uh, and we searched all over Sweden and uh, it was a crazy process. And everyone said that I was chasing a ghost and uh, uh, that I was crazy. And um, uh, cause I, but I had this really strong feeling of like, uh, she's out there and I, I can't give up until I find her. And uh, uh, yeah, it feels like a fairy tale. Cause I remember in slow motion, like opening the door and there she was. And I was like, yeah, I found her. And, and then like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's like this crazy, uh, cheesy fairy tale, like that she, finally was there and that yeah. she was so good and uh yeah like I, I mean I'm I'm thinking like sometimes I'm like what if I hadn't found Sophia like uh, <laughs> what I can't even uh, imagine what that yeah I think I pick things like that too it's like you want something and so you're trying to tell people like what you want and finally you're just like I can't describe what I want but I will know it when I see it yeah, and I, knew, I was like, I knew I'm, I'm gonna know just, yeah. when you saw her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes, it's picking things with your gut, I think. Mm. Um, are there big differences in the way the adult industry operates in Sweden versus the US? There's no adult industry in Sweden. Oh, wow. I mean, there are, of course, uh, people somewhere shooting something and putting up online but there's no industry like we don't have any 
it hasn't been like a pro professional people doing it professionally no one makes money of porn in sweden there's no companies there's no porn stars there's no studios there's nothing like that uh let's see has the film been used as outreach and how have people responded to the issues the film raises but uh, outreach what um what is that used as outreach sort of means uh are, are you showing it to particular groups of people uh who might be interested in the issues mall group mm -hmm. uh, i don't know uh what have we what do you say? No, I mean, the movie has been available to everyone in the, all countries that the movie has premiered. I think for us, what has been interesting is rather in like the Q&A's to see the cultural differences when it comes to censorship and uh, how we talk about sex and how we talk about porn. And um, we've been in Europe now, so it's going to be exciting to see how it will be received in the U.S. Uh, it's really it's so it's it's really interesting how people interpret it so differently and and also assuming uh, a lot of like assuming that this is what I wanted like some people are like uh, you know oh you uh, it's so great like you're really showing how uh, like awful this industry is and uh, these people and and so, then some people come up and like it's so like wonderful how you show how this industry is like that there's so much warmth and humanity and that the people are so great and she's having such a great time and she's really enjoying it and other are like she's just like she's suffering so much and she hates it and like just the, projecting so much of their own feelings of of, yeah. of it on and and then assuming that their feelings is the only right you know the truth or like my intention um yeah, uh, I mean, I think that actually speaks really good things about the film if so many people can can find so many things in it. Um, I was gonna say something, I forgot what it was. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, uh, speaking of censorship, I noticed in the film that you never, was it a decision early on to not do any full frontal on the female actresses, but uh, porn stars, but only do full frontal on the males. Mm. There's one full frontal, uh, and but it's not uh, Sofia; it's me, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm 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 the body double, and it's like this really really unsexy shot when uh, like shaving. Uh, so yeah, like definitely that's a very conscious decision um, of. Uh, you were yeah. the body double for Sophia in the shaving scene. Yeah, the 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 vagina. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not. I'm not sure. I've ever heard the director say they did the body double for the. He's the best ever. Like, yeah, but it's like it's just like such a relief because, I I mean I've chosen to, like I have this really strong. I have like I I have this like. Um, my passion in life is to fight, you know, uh, objectification of women and using female bodies in different ways. And then I'm making the topics about it and then I'm doing it myself. So I always like, I, I'm constantly in this situation where I have to like being in a power position as a director, asking uh, another woman to get undressed for me and do all these things. And like, that's just like, it's so fucking painful. And when I finally get to like, okay, I can do my art, but I don't have to like force any other woman to, you know, put, like do that. And, and I can just use myself. It's like, uh, it's like, whew. Um, so uh, I just, uh, there's so been so many times I wish I could just like, you know, switch body with Sofia and like, you know, because um, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very co like complex thing, even though yeah. like, I think now, like the way we, we shot the film and the visual language that we found is 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 never crossing, you know, any like I think it's it um, it works very well, but it, it is always hard. Like, yeah, I mean, that's I think it's I'm pretty it's, I think it's pretty amazing. You're not willing to ask anybody to do what you wouldn't do yourself. Like, that's the most amazing thing. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. Love, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much to the two of you. This film is one of my favorites of the past year. It just uh, made me think about so many things um, to do with the industry and with sex and, and 
human beings trying to exist within it. And um, I think it's wonderful. And thank you so much for talking with me today about it. Uh, the film opens tomorrow or Friday? Friday. Uh, Friday. Friday. Well, congratulations to you on your opening. And um, yeah, it's, um, tr it's a terrific film. I hope to speak with both of you uh, in other contexts uh, some, you know, someday in the future because I enjoy your work very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.